What up everybody, this is your truly Rama screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment and it's time for another collabo and my guest today is a familiar face, uh, my brother John Corona of The Real Talk YouTube channel. John Corona, oh, John Corona is one of my favorite YouTubers so go check out, subscribe to his channel, also a fantastic movie reviewer. Good morning John, how's it going? Hey, good morning, Rama. Thank you so much for having me, man. Uh, and I'm super stoked you asked me to do this video because everybody knows, you know, how much I love <laughs> Watchmen, the graphic novel, and the movie. Uh, so, yeah, man, thank you so much. It's been a while since we did one of these videos, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited to get into uh, the Watchmen uh, TV show with you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I always love talking with you, brother. And, um, yes, uh, we're, we're going to be discussing... Watchmen series and I have my notes on my screen here um, for the folks at home for those of you of you guys watching uh, Watchmen series is created by Damon Lindelof it's based on of course Alan Moore's graphic novel that was previously adapted to 2009 movie by Zack Snyder now Watchmen series on HBO it 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 kind of pays homage to the graphic novel and the movie in terms of you know certain elements and the characters but the show breaks new grounds. It tells a new story and about this uh, uh, Regina King, Oscar winner Regina King playing Sister Knight, a.k.a. Angela Abar, a detective, in a world where police have, the police have to wear masks now. And the, uh, the bad guys is called Seventh Calvary, and they wear their own mask, uh, Rorschach masks. <laughs> and we get, also get to see Adrian Veidt and, and Lori, you know, a couple of characters from the canon. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I got to... Let me, let me start with this. Uh, as I was watching the first few episodes, you know, because I, I did not grow up a big fan of Watchmen like you are, I was trying to, like, put the pieces together, trying to, you know, wrap my head around some of the weird imagery. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, before we get to the themes, you know, about the, the, the police brutality and the racism, I want to ask you, like, what was your reaction watching the first few episodes the pilot episode two and three what was your reaction about this show you being a fan of Watchmen? the first few episodes to be perfectly honest like like you said um it, it just depends like when you're first time watching it if you ever heard of Watchmen, you know have you ever heard about the graphic novel or ever seen the movie i think different people got into the show for different reasons you know and that's why i really like it and um but for the first few episodes, being a big Watchmen guy, even from the graphic novel, since it was going to be a direct sequel to the graphic novel, you know, um, mm. I was really worried, obviously, because it's something I hold, you know, so near and dear to my heart, um, that story especially. Um, but I, I don't know. I was kind of, you know, thinking about it, taking my time with it, letting, letting it sink in. It, it With the first episode, it started off really well. I was like, okay, you know what? This is a very well-made show. It's an HBO show, definitely, you know. Uh, you can see and hear and feel the budget, you know. Um, and the acting That's was right. fantastic. And also the score uh, by Trent Reznor and Atticus oh, Ross. I was like, you know what? Yes. I think the, everything about the show, technically, I really liked it. The story, I really loved where it began. I was like, all right, cool. Let's see where it goes from here, you know. Yeah. And episode by episode, week by week, it just get, it kept getting me pulled into that world. And little by little, I was like, okay, well, how does this relate to the Watchmen universe? You know, it takes place in the same uh, world and everything like that. But I was like, well, do I want to see a lot of, you know, familiar characters or just, you know, something new? And I really love what they did and kind of, you know, bringing in someone from canon here and there. You're not just kind of making a direct sequel. Yeah. You know, just in new characters and dealing especially with uh, Angela Abar with her character, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just week by week, episode by episode, just kept me coming back more and more and more and just up to the point where I'm just like, you know what? This is kind of lives up to uh everything i feel like watchman watchman was you know yeah oh uh this uh note for the viewers if there's some internet connection or some uh skipping of the images here uh we apologize <laughs> that's beyond our control <laughs> i think that the connection yeah. today is really kind of messing with us uh so but uh, thank you for being patient on that Especially and also <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Plus, it's raining, and and uh, we're gonna be discussing spoilers. There will be spoilers in this video. Uh, so just a heads up: this video is mostly for those of you who've already or who have seen Watchmen series thus far. But thank you for sharing that reaction to uh, uh, to me, brother. And you know, I, I think I, I'm on the same boat in that uh, even though I'm not uh, too familiar with Watchmen canon like you are. Yeah. I, I love the atmosphere. I love the look of the show. I love, like you said, the music. You know, as far as production goes, 
man, they spare no expense. It's just, it's just such a a well made well-made high quality show overall in terms of the craftsmanship of it yeah and um let's get right to it here i got a few questions i want to i want to because every time I, every week i watch an episode i get confused and i'm like <laughs> i wish i had john corona with me because <laughs> yeah. john corona is my encyclopedia to everything watchmen okay so uh, of course the, the, some of the spoilers here uh so the the way that damon lindelof you know the creator of loss and the leftover yeah He's always weird, man. You've seen Lost. You've seen Leftover. There's always weird stuff going on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 of course, Watchmen novel itself is already weird. So I, I want to ask your opinion about how he incorporates, not, you know, we're not going we're gonna to get to Adrian and Laurie, but how he, inco- he incorporates some of the uh, events in Watchmen. Like, uh, there's an episode, uh, fill, filler episode on The Looking Glass. Um, I think it's uh, episode... I want to say episode four, maybe episode four. Yeah, so episode four on the Looking Glass, and then uh, they incorporate or he incorporates the squid, the squid, the 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 New York City squid, right? And then yeah. uh, there's another also an episode where he incorporates an element from the book, just to kind of tease us, like hey, or sort kind of trying to make a connection to the book, but it's not that 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 squid or whatever that element is, it doesn't take over the entire story. It's just like. Here you go, guys. You know, just gonna to show you yeah. that you know to kind of give you a tease of like, oh, there is a connection to the Alan Moore. Well, what are your thoughts about that? Did you, did you like how the squid looks? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> that was a very kind of like surprising uh, episode too. I love that episode, uh, the kind of like origin story to Looking Glass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't think you know they were gonna go full on. They they gave us a little tease in the beginning with the raining squid. You know. Yeah. I was, All right. So this is kind of, uh, I believe, Adrian's vibe plan to kind of just, okay, hey, the squid is there. It's out there. It can, you know, come at any time, you know. That's why like, it just rains squid, apparently. Um, and in that episode where they kind of just explain his story in that, you know, kind of fun house. Uh, and then just something happens and the way it pulls out and just <gasps> yeah. I thought it was a beautiful shot. And then, I mean, it looks comic book accurate, you know. It yeah. looks like straight from the, from the book. And I love that that event we get to see it uh, kind of play out a little bit more in other places and, and how it affected other people. You know, in the book and the movie, we got a hint of that, but in also how it affected our main characters. But we never really affected, uh, seen how it affected like just normal people, you know, and how devastating it really was. And then that scene was really horrific, you know, kind of he just comes out and every, like almost everybody's dead, you know? Yeah. I, I believe they said everybody who was outside, you know, since he was oh. inside, he got to survive. So that that was kind of interesting. Wait, 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 wait. So how did they die again? Um, I guess just because of the uh, they said something about like um, I'm not sure if it was like psychic blast or something like oh. that. Oh, kind of just like it, it. I guess it landed, and when it did, it kind of just put out this like psychic like a, blast. It kind of yeah, like blast the audio. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that oh. was really interesting. Oh, so 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 because he's inside the 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 mirror house. He's protected from that. Yeah, he was. Uh, I, I believe they said that like everybody who was inside at the moment that happened like survived, and everybody who was outside, you know. I see. And especially like a city like Manhattan or all the bigger cities where he, you know, send the blast from. I think uh, like Los Angeles. It's always a busy city, so it's gonna get a lot of people. A lot of people are outside, you know. <laughs> so which makes me wonder, like, how come the HBO show can pull it off, but Zack Snyder had to change the ending instead yeah. of the squid? Like, like. Like, why can't you, like, when I saw that on the uh, Watchmen show, I was like, I didn't think of it as cheesy or like, you know, it's like, oh, that's how it, that's how it is in the graphic novel. Why, why did Zack yeah. Snyder change it again? Um, I think he, I mean, in, in my personal opinion, too, the way he incorporated Dr. Manhattan oh, yeah. in him actually eventually being responsible, not directly, but, you know, indirectly responsible for what happens I think it makes a little bit more sense uh, for Manhattan's character and also Adrian's to kind of use his his Manhattan's character for that, you know. Um, okay. That's just me, you know, because in the in the graphic novel it was kind of just like a random squid, like you know, you yeah. never really understood why, you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it was like an alien invasion kind of thing going on, but um, I thought it made more sense for Manhattan to do it, and it, it was it's kind of weird too because everybody was like, oh, you know the the movie's almost, you know, page by page, 
accurate to the graphic novel. Of, of course. But then he, he did take some liberties, and obviously the ending being the biggest one. Um, but I just, I mean, I just liked how that kind of, what that meant to, to certain characters, you know? Yeah. Uh, in the movie. Um, but I think, you know, that's why he, you know, when you adapt something to a movie, you tr- try to find it, you know, more, okay, cool, like, what can we change to make it more, you know, fit the overall, you know, story, and I guess that's what he decided to do, you know, but oh. it's kind of risky for for Watchmen to, uh, for HBO to greenlit this show uh-huh. about that graphic novel and just kind of put that in there, uh, but that's the one of the things I love, that it's kind of making people vis- revisit the graphic novel and then the movie as well, you know, like, if they're exactly. interested in that. Uh, it brings more awareness, which I, I really love. You know, <laughs> I you know, I have so many questions. I, I I don't want this to feel like an interview, but it's starting to feel like it because I'm. So oh, no, I mean, you're, you're fine. I'm, I'm, I'm talking a, about it too, and I, I love but, Watchmen. So, <laughs> but I'll share my thoughts too, so it'll feel like a conversation more. Um, but uh, let me ask you about the. Uh, uh, okay, so let's talk about the alter egos, the other alter egos, before we get to. Uh, uh, to dive well, before we t- dive deep into uh, Angela Abar and Sister Knight, her character. Um, so let's see here what's on my list. Let me see here. Um, do, 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 okay, so uh, what are your thoughts about Looking Glass, uh, Red Scare, Pirate Jenny? Oh my God, these characters are so. Because my uh, to me to me Red Scare is uh, Red, Red, Red Scare cracks me up. The guy is, yeah. the guy is always like. <laughs> angry all the time power jenny we don't know much about power jenny uh looking glass we have a, a an episode dedicated to him and he's a very integral part of the storyline and overall and then there's that, that and there's that character also the loop man the one that like runs <laughs> <laughs> he just loops himself up and- <laughs> I think I think our fellow YouTuber Jared Buckendall tweeted that gif with the caption like you know there's a party in Penny House uh, Pennywise Pennywise sewage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, he put that I'm sorry repeat that brother I uh, you could correction oh, no, I was just saying that that was, that was hilarious man Jared obviously he's 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 a funny guy man. He's actually in town. I don't know if you heard What? Oh, yeah, he's here in LA? Yeah. All right. Down right now. <laughs> I gotta hit him up. I gotta hit him up. So, yeah, so we, be honest, we can hang out with him. But yeah, man, yeah. that Lube man just kind of out of nowhere he just came out, and I was like, what the we haven't seen him since, you know. But and like what he's all about. So it's very interesting if he if he's his character gonna come back. You know, is he working with the Seven Calvary or something? So, but but these 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 alter egos or these uh, uh, vigilantes uh, or, or cops, you know, with their characters. Uh, what do you think? Are are they as iconic as the comedian and Night Owl, or do they? Do you think that they're just yeah, you know, they're okay? <laughs> well, definitely, Lube Man is going to give them a run for their money. <laughs> I think he's my favorite so far. <laughs> no, agreed, um, agreed. That's a very interesting question. Um, to be perfectly honest, I mean, I, you know how I, I love the the story and the characters and so like, so it's going to be very hard. Uh, Sister Knight is definitely up there, though. You know, oh, yeah. I, I think she's a wonderful character. Looking Glass is pretty cool too. Looking Glass is kind of filling in the void of like Rorschach because he oh, has a past kind of like him. You know, you're right. uh, not necessarily living up to him, but you yeah. know, he, it is another masked character, and so that was pretty cool. And, and, and um, he's very idealistic, like Rorschach. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And and that's the thing too with all the other people like Red Scare and even uh, Pirate Jenny. I feel like they're very like. If that Watchmen universe continued, eventually that those people would come up. Like I feel like they're very Watchmen inspired, you know, kind of like uh, uh, like the other Minutemen as well. Like they're like uh, uh, Hooded Justice, you know, like that's something right. like that. Like they're very on the same level, like the name, but something like uh, Sister Night and and those uh, have been my favorites, and and they're. She's like right up there, you know. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Uh, well, since you bring it up, uh, since you brought that up, uh, Hooded Justice, his uh, origin story got revamped to fit with the yeah. the themes of this show. Um, a lot of people, at least what I saw on the web and YouTube, are feeling divided about that. And I guess we can all uh, we can just straight tie it with the with the themes of this show of uh, racism and police brutality. Um, some YouTubers that I watch feel like. What is this agenda show? They 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 call they call it agenda show. Like you know, what, you know yeah. SJW. Like wh- why do I have to go this way? And I tweeted, and I I, I think you saw my tweet. Like it's okay. <laughs> like Damon Lindelof is making this his own. 
you know, just like Alan Moore is, you know, when he came up with the graphic novel, he dealt with Vietnam War and whatever yeah. stuff uh, Nixon and whatever stuff that go- was going on in his era. So David Lindelof was like, you know what? We're gonna deal with the stuff that's going on in our era. Our, you know, yeah. so uh, uh, so the way the Hooded Justice got revamped to fit the storyline, I didn't mind it at all. You know, they connected with uh, with the um, the lineage of Sister Knight. You know, the whole yeah. thing with the grandfather and uh, uh, the, the 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 responsibility to be a cop. And uh, so, what what are your thoughts about all that heavy stuff? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, there was a few hints. Um, Especially the the one that I got really on was um, I think in the first ep- I think in the second episode when you see um, I'm I'm forgetting uh, uh, yeah Will Reeves there you go yeah when you see him obviously that he's responsible for uh, the police for chief the, yeah for, for the police chief and also he he, he had a uh, like a knot around him you know that's right and I was like wait that kind of that immediately reminded me of like Hood of Justice but uh, you know they're not gonna they're not going to tackle that. It's like, you know, like it's just kind of a coincidence, you know, kind of maybe an homage. Uh, but then that episode got revealed and it started with Hooded Justice. I was like, you know what? They might do it, you know? And to be perfectly honest, you know, in the graphic novel, he was kind of just like a strong man. You know, we, they never really revealed who he was. There was always like a hint, yeah. but it never like, oh, hey, this is officially, you know, Hood, uh, Hooded Justice, you know? Because it was always about the other Watchmen and the, the other Minutemen. So for me to for uh, Lindelof to kind of take li- uh, liberty with this character, I didn't really mind it at all. Like if he kind of tried to change another character, like Night Owl or something, then I would have been kind of like, well, you know, <laughs> that's where you <laughs> draw the line. That's where you draw the line. <laughs> yeah, like that's where I draw the line. But if you do something with a character that wasn't really that established, you know, not that I- iconic, rem- memorable, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought it was brilliant the way they they also tied it to again, like you said. Sister Nye and Angela, I thought it. If they did that, that would work work because the show is kind of about her and what she's going through and stuff like that. So I thought that was really and and again, a lot of people have been tweeting, uh, you know, not my Watchmen and stuff like that because it yeah. doesn't like, racism and stuff. I was like, well, Watchmen dealt with a lot of political stuff, a lot of social I- issues right? too. But so that's why, like you said, Lindelof is adapting it for a show of now. And he's taking the same themes that Alan Moore did. Like you said, it's dealing with stuff that we're dealing with today, you know? And if you do a Watchmen now, think about why Adrian Veidt did what he did back then. We were on the brink of war, right? Mm -hmm. So he tried to save that. So now we're kind of on the brink of, you know, another like maybe civil war, you know, not on the brink. You know, it's not, you know, that, that bad. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point. Exactly. There's a lot of divided the divisiveness with, between the American people, you know, a lot of stuff. And, and I think he's trying to adapt to what Watchmen did to now. And I thought, I think he's doing a, a great job. You know, I think Hood Justice that episode, episode seven uh, was fantastic as well. So I, I, I think uh, personally what he's doing with all the themes and messages, I think it's very Watchmen. It, it does pay respects to the graphic novel and, and continues it, you know? Yeah. And by the way, um, if you see me kind of like uh, feeling, uh, looking confused, it's not, not nothing wrong. It's just uh, I was waiting for the connection to connect again. Oh, just no, I, get, I, you know. I, it's not the same here. <laughs> so, but, but I'm still hearing you, brother. Okay, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're navigating around this, uh, my, my, uh, our viewers at home. So, <laughs> bear with us. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so um, I, I agree with you totally. And I think, you know what, to, to your point, uh, 30 years from now, if somebody else wants to reboot a Watchmen series, right? They're going to be doing Watchmen about the po- politics or the society problems in their era, you know, 30 years from now, right? And that's how it is. That's just how it is. So, and and I think um, one of the things that, uh, one of the things that I appreciate about this uh, Watchmen series is that they brought up like the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre, that's a part of yeah. our our nation's history that that little people know about. You know, he got buried yeah. because it was so terrible. It was like racism at its brutal, you know, worst point. You know, it, it, the whole town just eviscerated, and they, yeah. they history uh, U.S. history books try to bury that. And for Damon Lindelof to like uh, bring our attention to that, it's like wow. It's really it's like waking us up. You know, at least in my opinion. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Like it, it's been uh, educating a lot of people. Definitely me because I was one of those that I had to look it up. You know, I was me like, too. Wait, me did too. This actually happened, and and 
I think in that sense, I mean, again, a round of applause to HBO and Lindelof to kind of making a show around attention and kind of, you know, um, unfortunately that that's something that that did happen. Um, but to have the show kind of center around that, I think it's it's very uh, again not only educational but it makes uh, sense for the whole story and what that's dealing with, especially uh, since it's timely as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think it was pretty that that first episode kind of started off with the the big bang, you know. <laughs> I got you. All right, let's get to the next spoiler here because I got this question like burning in the back of my head for you. Uh, <laughs> so you saw the last episode, right? The, yes. This recent episode, okay. So John Osterman apparently has possessed uh, Carl all this time, correct? Apparently, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was still chilling in Mars, you know, with his retirement plan and all yes. that, you know. <laughs> he was like, because because uh, she knocked her, out, uh, she knocked him out with a hammer, and she got that thing out of uh, his head, you know, the the I don't know what you call it, the symbol of Do- the symbol of Doctor Manhattan, you know, and then she said the last line is like. You know, John, we're in fucking trouble. You know, uh, so like, what, what, what is, what is your theory on that? Like, why, does, why did she hit it? Why did she hide it all this time? Uh, I mean, there's there could be a lot of reasons why. You know, uh, her wanting to live like a normal life and everything like that. Maybe, but I still think there's something about Angela we don't know yet. You know, like ah. maybe that she's kind of been leading everybody on. You know. Because she's been been doing a lot, like her character so far that we've seen her, she's been very on the side of right, like she wants to do what what's the the right thing, but very like it, it comes up a lot that she's trying to hide a few things, you know, for her own reason. Like maybe she like she has her own schedule, you know, mm. like her own agenda or whatever. So now with this coming up, may, it makes all my hand was gonna be included in the show but i didn't know he was going to be included in this you know yeah uh in this capacity but so it's very interesting uh so i think that we're gonna you know hopefully next episode uh, tomorrow we're gonna find out why she <sighs> she did that you know um so good. but yeah man um, <laughs> i'm so i'm so i'm so happy that it, it kind of again it, it connects back to um angela you know like dr yeah. Mahan and stuff like that I mean, it explains a lot too how uh, Lori was kind of attracted to uh, Cal, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, oh, okay. the, and we saw last week's episode how Doctor Manhattan so uh, he permeates in the culture of Vietnam. Everybody's just like you know, you know, yeah. making Doctor Manhattan dolls and Doctor Manhattan, you know, pop culture stuff. It was so interesting the way Damon Lindelof incorporates this iconic character to yeah. into his show, and, um, and and you know, along with that. Um, the the whole thing regarding Lori, uh, Lori re- regarding Lori Blake and Adrian Veidt, those are the two characters from the canon that kind of show up as theaters regulars on this show. I love how Jean Smart plays Lori Blake so far. Oh yeah, yeah, she's she's like this uh, intuitive uh, detective, like you know, she, you can't bullshit her. Although, yeah. uh, the police chief's wife got an upper hand on her <laughs> with that. Oh, with that I know. I, I felt like that was kind of like what, like when she went like this and it didn't work, she should have like got yeah. up or something, like you know. Yeah, because she was just there, like waiting for it. I'm like, well, come on, Lori, like you're in the Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you because I, I said in my review, like, dude, the the show sells Lori Blake as this smart, intuitive, like you, you like you can't bullshit her kind of woman. But like really, like she, she can't. She couldn't see that coming a mile away. Even after yeah. the uh, after the trap door button got broken a little bit, like it was, it it, it kind of bugs me a little bit that part. But but I want to get to you real, real quick, you know, because uh about the oh are we connecting? Okay, about Adrian Veidt. Oh my God, how weird is Adrian Veidt in this? Because his storyline is kind of separate. <laughs> you know, he's like separate away from Angela Abar. Like I keep waiting for like, yeah. when is this storyline going to integrate with Angela Abar? But it's still separate. You know, the piglets, you know, him going to the moon, like the clones, <laughs> the clones. <laughs> in the lake. Like he's, he's growing babies in the lake. Like what? <laughs> I'm like Jackie Chan meme, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? I know it's good. it's the kind of weird that I it's the kind of weird that doesn't put me off. It's the kind of weird that I want more of because it's so weird, but I like I, it. I, I love what they're doing with Adrian because, in a sense, it's kind of like in a graphic novel. There, oh. there was a, a comic book within the comic book. Yeah, uh, and um, like you, you hit it right on the nail. Like I'm just still confused. Like where where is he? You know, apparently he 
escapes at one point, but he's in like on the moon or something. Like, so where <laughs> where is you know, like the Doctor Manhattan put him there or something? Because like it, it seems like something along the, with his powers, you know, like that Manhattan can do. But it's very interesting, man. I, I can't wait to see more of that storyline. It's two more episodes, so they need to, you know, wrap it up sometime soon. Who, but um, who's yeah, who? it's, and then Jeremy Iron is fantastic. <laughs> who's the who's the who's the guy? You know, teach me. Who's the guy? That presided the court, that judge, the one that kicks uh, Adrian Veidt in the face, in the in the trial last week. I, what what is it? I think he's another clone, the same guy. Oh, yeah, he's one of the, the butlers. Same, yeah, one of the butlers. I think he's the same guy. Oh. I guess he was just like assigned to. Hey, you know, if I get out of line or some, I don't know. We we, just, we still don't know yet. <laughs> but he he very much looks like one of the clones. Could you imagine having your clones and they can see murder the whole clones in one room and then he just you know, recreates them again? It's just so weird. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre, man. Adrian Vine's like kind of like losing it or I don't know, man. He's Maybe that's a sort of punishment for what he did, you know? Yes. But I think very much that now that I say that, uh, I'm, good, uh, I'm glad I pointed it out. I, I think... Yeah. I think he very much feels a lot of regret for what he did and I think mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he himself put himself in that place, you know, because mm. when we left him in the comic, he was kind of looking to John for uh, Dr. Manhattan for reassurance, you know, mm. and he kind of just left. And uh, especially in the last episode, we kind of just see him not really care for what's going on. But also you see a sort of like there's something, a, a pain going in him, like growing in him, you know, like he, something. Sa- oh, sorry, bro. John, repeat that last point. You, you kind of froze. Oh, on no, me. I was just saying like, you know, you, you definitely feel like see something like a, uh, in him that's like sad like something wrong you know something's bothering him you know i see what you so, mean so you're saying that uh, he created this own personal hell as a punishment for himself I, like maybe you know yeah. because i feel like you know again he feels a lot of regret for it or something so he maybe he's you know what I get this that. is what i deserve or something you know i get that which leads me to my ne- next thing I, I think it it does connect to this um because lady true is another interesting character yes. Yeah. Uh, played by one of my favorite actresses, Hong Chow. Uh, even though that movie with Matt Damon kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that she was in that movie um, where Wait, everybody the one gets where like in the, uh, What was it called? Like the uh, they were like defending the Great Wall or something. From no, 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 no. Uh, everybody turned small. Everybody became small, like t- mini miniature. Christoph oh, Waltz. Yeah, that size. You know she she was yeah, in there. Yeah, man. Don't get me started with that one. <laughs> <laughs> she was the Asian girl that one. Okay, so uh Lady True, this trillionaire character, um I mentioned in my review, her idea is fantastic. Nostalgia, that's a great invention, especially for people who have Alzheimer's or, you know, dementia to, yeah. you know, to put your memories and then you can reharvest it again or so it's fantastic if you create that you'll make you know millions or billions of dollars um at the same time she has this millennium clock going and i don't know what it's doing a lot of people on online says uh, one theory about the millennium clock is that uh it will erase people's memories and that's how she will create peace on earth um and one one theory says well that's what that's why the elephant is there because the elephant you know elephants retain most memories i don't know what what do you think about she this can work it around like re-engineer it right exactly like like but then again you know my my thing is you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions right that's the that's the saying so that's what it what happened in watchman movie or maybe in the novel as well with um with adrian veidt Ozymandias, like, you know, this yeah. this world is messed up. We're going to p- press restart button, you know. And the same thing with Lady True. I feel like she, she has good intention, but I think, like, you know, it's going to end up evil with this Millennium Clock. What do you, what do you yeah. think? No, yeah, definitely. I, I really, I've really i been really liking her character. And then, too, it got revealed that that wasn't her daughter. It was her mom, actually. Yeah, that's... So <sighs> now I'm kind of thinking, like, she kind of cloned her. Well, like, that kind of ties into Adrian Veidt's story. Like, maybe does Lady True have something to do with that? You know, like... Yeah. Uh, but also, she get, she does remind me of Adrian Veidt and stuff like that. And her and his plot kind of seems similar. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have no idea. Like, the, the Millennium Clock, I was thinking about that, too. Like, maybe something, like, another big event is going to happen or something, you know? I I, um, I I think my theory about the, the, the daughter being the mom... Because the, the the nostalgia memory pills, so you can you can harvest it into anybody, you know. Because because Regina King, Sister Knight, 
she uh, she ingested the memory pill of Will Reeves too much of it. Yeah. You know, if you if you if you did that, I think you would end up uh, your memory of your own body's memory will will be overtaken by Will Reeves' memory. You know what I'm saying? So I think oh, I think okay. I, I think it's you know the kid is just some somebody some kid. It's not necessarily a clone. You know, and then she you know she. Uh, fully That's why ingested she says, oh, I've been having these dreams about this old lady. Exactly. So, like slowly but surely, she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense too. That's my theory. That's my theory. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go, go, go on, go on. I, I, I cut oh, you. Oh, no, I was just saying. You know, um, yeah, I think something. I, I was thinking about. You know what? Watchmen, the graphic novel, ended like with this big event trying to unite the world, right? Yes. So, like, how could they do that with this story? You know, how could they unite everybody right now? Like, what's what's being divided? You know, like. Obviously, exactly. there's racism going on. So how can we end racism? And I think maybe they're going to tackle it in that way where you said maybe just erase, try to erase that from people's minds or something or try to, you know, definitely do something with, with the mind, you know, kind of memories. Yeah, memories. Yeah. So and that clock is very big. So, again, it could be like, a, a you know, admit another wave or something like that or, you know. We yes. got we got to wait and see. <laughs> yes, but I, I think uh, we're in agreement, right? I think it will backfire somehow. Because uh, oh, you know, yeah. good, there's good intentions, you know that it's just like oh, just like Ozymandias. Yeah, this is how we're gonna do it to reset bun. But yeah. people, people die, you know, in the squid thing. So I think there there'll be some some uh, downsides to this mem- Millennium Clock. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, as I'm winding down, I, I want to ask you this because uh, Damon Lindelof did say that you know I don't have any plans for season two. Uh, so this might end up be just being the only Watchmen series. This might end up being just a limited series or mini series, you know, that with yeah. no nothing continu- continuing or follow up to it. Are are you sad, saddened by that? Are you bummed out <laughs> about that? Because I I, oh. I feel like I feel like if it's just this, I think I'll be okay with it. I think I'll be okay with it. Yeah. What do you think? No, yeah, I mean. I, I love that if it's just one season, cool. Like, if we just get this one story, because that's what essentially Watchmen was. It was just 12 issues. Right. Uh, and that's it, you know? Um, but it's just so good, man. You know, <laughs> all these cast members and the story, like, like maybe they could do another one. Like, you know, like, okay, well, this is one version of it, and maybe, maybe it can happen like this. You know, I don't know. I just want I like more that. of this show, you know? <laughs> but, um, t- I mean, to be perfectly honest, if I had the decision, it would be just one season, a miniseries, like you said. Uh, it would have been, I mean, twelve episodes, twelve you know comic books, uh, twelve yeah. issues. That would have been cool. But I understand why they're doing nine. They kind of like in every panel with the graphic novels, nine you know little panels. So that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, it's just so good. You know, it's just so good that I, I would want more of it. But as a story, I'm a fan of storytelling. So if it's just nine episodes, mm-hmm. it tells you what it wants to tell you. One and done, it'll be beautiful. You know, kind of like the Joker. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> and I, I, I like your idea too because uh, you, I think if it's uh, if it ends up being an anthology, you know, not necessarily a season two, yeah, right? Exactly. Like trying to carrying the same messages and themes of Watchmen, just like different stories or something. I don't know. Like, oh. I, I just I just want more. Like Daniel Lindelof, like Lost is my favorite show. Yes. So again, when he was tackling Watchmen and then Trent Reznor act as Ross, some of my favorite, you know. Score people like uh, composers. I'm like, come on, this show is like kind of like built for me, but um, yeah, I, I want more of it. But yeah, if uh, storytelling wise, it's gonna be hopefully it's gonna, you know, it's not like uh, Game of Thrones, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, John, our time is running out. Unfortunately, I love talking with you as always, especially about Watchmen because you're yeah. just like the uh, the guru when it comes to this. So Thank you so much for your time. By the way, viewers at home, both our viewers, John's and mine, uh, yes. watching this, um, uh, go go subscribe to the Real Talk YouTube channel, uh, and also go watch our previous collabo video celebrating the tenth anniversary of Watchmen. You're gonna love that, man. Uh, John, do a plug in. Uh, where can people f- uh, follow or subscribe to you, or uh, you know, on social media or whatever? Yeah, uh, like Rama said, you guys can find me. I have my own YouTube channel, which is at the Real Talk, um, and on social media uh, at the Real Talk. Talk with two Ks. I'm always on Twitter talking about movies and stuff like that. On Letterbox as well. And yeah, guys, if you guys are watching this video uh, coming from my channel, definitely subscribe to Rama. He does a lot of movie reviews, you know, celebrity interviews, and he does a lot of coverage for Comic Con. So he he has a lot on his channel, and and he's one of the best doing it today. So definitely subscribe. Thank you so much, John, for your time. Until next collabo, let's rock this. Bye, guys.